My name is Julia Ojango. Um, I work with the International Livestock Research Institute, that's ILRI, based in Nairobi, Kenya. Um, I work with the team that looks into animal genetics and, and breeding. Basically, um, our vision and our goal is to try and use livestock and the practice of animal genetics and breeding to try and help change the livelihoods of livestock keepers in developing countries. One of the developing countries we've had the privilege to work in is Nicaragua, um, which is in Latin America, a totally different system from what we would generally find um, in Africa. And Nicaragua is unique. They keep animals both for milk and meat products because um, they, they produce both milk and meat for export to American countries, but also some to the United States of America. Um, Nicaragua is, is a developing country in terms of the livelihoods or the incomes for their farmers are really still low, but livestock does contribute significantly to their um, national economy. Um, in Nicaragua, um, we found that there were a lot of livestock keepers um, that own um, smaller land sizes with herd sizes of less than 25 um, animals. That's between 10 and 25 animals. And these are the livestock keepers that we felt would be important to help target to, to change their, their livelihoods. As part of the livestock and fish strategy, um, the objective was how do we use genetics to help change the, the way in which the breeds that the animals, the farmers are keeping um, will produce products for, for their lives. But because we didn't have a lot of information on Nicaragua, we had to begin by trying to understand the environments and the systems that we were working in. Um, following the baseline, um, we immediately realized that all the small, almost all the smallholder farmers kept a bull. And the other thing was, there was not one single breed type that you would say, this is the main breed type being kept by the farmers. But they had a variety of crosses, not really purebreds, but crosses. Most of the crosses were crosses to Brahmin, but you had like brown Swiss crosses, Jersey crosses, Holstein crosses. And that immediately um, raised, raised a lot of questions as to why and what happened. So following the baseline, we, we decided let's go back to the communities and talk with them and try and learn from them and see what influences their practices and what would they need to do or what would they try to change if they were asked to change. Um, from, from experiences elsewhere, the best way to, to get farmers to, to give you information is using their animals. So um, we organized for the group discussion to be held on a farmer's farm. So, and we, we requested them to get a farmer who had enough animals of the different variety and to try and see if we could actually, at the same time, give feedback and have training on the choice and selection of different breed types. What struck us immediately, we went for the follow-up or the feedback workshop, is that it's mainly men who attended. Um, within the whole group, there was only one woman who came. And uh, her peculiarity was she was already an extension worker. So she was an extension worker as well as a livestock keeper. And that was the only thing that made her feel free to come and sit among the men to talk. But otherwise, all the other participants were men. But the farmer's wife and his children um, were available to prepare the meals and cook for the group that came. So they, they offered that service and they, they were subsequently facilitated to, to cook for the group that came for the training. Um, as part of the process of group discussions, we have developed a series of tools that we used and small group work to try and, first of all, um, just share with the farmers what we saw from the baseline, the different breed types, and then we raised questions related to the types of animals they were keeping and the practices that they, they were using. Um, and in, in the small subgroups, we got the farmers to define what were the traits of importance, but particularly our interest was the breeding practices adopted to help change their herds and what they knew about them. 
the farmers um, noted that yes, they, they understood the use of AI because for cattle production, I mean, artificial insemination is known to really cause rapid and drastic changes in the herds over a short time. So they said they do know about the practice, but they don't really use it much. And the question came to why. They said, well, projects do bring up AI and they adopt it, but then after that, the AI is not available, so they don't use it anymore. And then we asked them, what, what do they like about the animals that they use? And they, they chose the, the traits that they would desire in their animals. Their vision was they want an animal that could produce about 15 kilos of, of milk and had good growth rates because the calves that were born to their cows are often sold off to other producers who then raise them as animals for slaughter. So that way then they have the, the dual purpose nature of the animals. But um, one thing that was concerning um, each one of us was the promotion also of um, different breed types within the farmer herds. Um, in, in, in the process of having the, the group work, we decided let's have a practical demonstration. So we requested the farmers to go and actually look at the animals that the farmer kept and we separated them into groups and told them to identify the two best in terms of the traits that they felt were of interest to them as livestock um, breeders. And it was very interesting because when the farmers selected the cows physically, at the end of the day when we asked them why they selected the cows and then we brought up what they had listed in the discussion, um, it turned out that they were kind of two different lines along which they were selecting because they selected the live animals based on the color and the physical appearance externally of the animals without looking at the other characteristics, without looking at did the animal have any records or information on them, without looking at any historical background on the animals. And yet, during the group discussions, these are the things that they had said would guide their choices of which animals they would use. Now, of, of course, then that, that for us um, served as a, a learning point and a point where you could help guide the farmers in terms of these are the principles you look at in breeding. Um, so following the, the discussions, um, we, we would go back to plenary sessions, but because the whole morning and day's activities had been quite busy, we took a break and decided let's have some refreshment and some lunch. Um, as facilitators, um, we were given good treatment and were asked, please come and sit in a separate room. And so we went as, and sat in a separate room and then what surprised us was, as the women served us, they said they had a question to ask. And um, So we said, yeah, go ahead. And their question was, you know, this AI that you talk about, when, when you use it, how long do you have to wait? You know, when you see a cow wanting to be mounted, how long do you have to wait before it has to be served if you really want to get that calf? And so we asked, that's an interesting question. Have you tried to use the AI? And she says, yes, we've tried, but we never get a calf. So we no longer use it um, because every time we try to use it, we don't get a calf. And so we asked, what, what's the process when you try to use the AI? She says, oh, when I see the animal in heat, then I tell my husband. But normally he waits until the following morning and then he sends for the AI technician. And we laughed and said, oh, by then it is too late <laughs> because the animal has probably cycled and lost the cycle. She says, yes, in fact, normally I then push it beside the bull or near the neighbor's bull and I'll get the calf that I need. But the next question was, where can I get information on what to do? So immediately we noticed that though the women were not present at the workshop, it didn't mean that the women were not curious to know or learn about the breeding or the use of the different technologies. But it also didn't mean that the women didn't want to use them. It's just they didn't have the knowledge required. So um, we requested our partners on the ground, do you think we could try and have a workshop where you just target or bring the women together and try and find them? Um, and this, this was possible um, and it was arranged. And when the women were asked, what training do you think we should try and organize for you? 
immediate reaction was train us on how to manage reproduction and use AI. If we can use AI effectively, then we don't have to keep these bulls. And maybe we could change our herds. And